we're talking about the right atria. So we're going to be looking at our P waves as the P waves are showing atrial depolarization. And so if we look at this coronal slice, remember, let's just do a quick review. We have our sinus node here in the upper right hand. It's going to fire off and it's going to depolarize the atria, right? This is going to produce the P wave. Now let's look a little bit closer and, and actually think about what is the right atria when the right atria depolarizes, how can we capture its characteristics? Because we're looking for right atrial enlargement on EKG. So what part of this P wave is going to show us what's going on with the right atria? And so what's interesting is that when the right atria, so when the SA node here in the upper right corner of our uh, heart fires, it actually depolarizes the right atria first in this fashion, and then through this channel called Bachman's Bundle, Bachman's, I might spell that wrong, Bundle, this electrical activity actually spreads to the left atria through Bachman's Bundle, and then the left atria is going to depolarize. And from a time perspective, we can understand that the right atria depolarizes first. And as it's depolarizing, we notice that those signals are predominantly going right, from superior to inferior, and from right to left. And if I drew the arrow of the axis of the right atrial depolarization, it would be something like this. And if you would notice, lead two would capture that signal the best, seeing that lead two is almost oriented exactly in that direction. And so if the right atria is enlarged, or another way to think of that is if it's maybe hypertrophied, then we would see very high signals in the leads that capture uh, the right atria depolarizing. And so the best criteria that you would see for right atrial enlargement would be a P wave that is greater than 2.5 millimeters in one of the inferior leads, which would be two, predominantly, like we said, it would also be three, and it could also be AVF. So if the P wave amplitude is greater than 2.5 millimeters in any of these inferior leads, which would be capturing that right atrial depolarization, then we can say that this would meet criteria for right atrial enlargement. We can also see if we look at the transverse leads or our precordial leads, this is a transverse slice through the body. These are where the leads are located on our chest wall. That when this SA node fires, the right atria is going to depolarize. If the muscle of the right atria that I'm kind of drawing here in blue, if they're thickened and really, really strong and enlarged, then we might actually get some right atrial depolarization that is going more towards the anterior aspect of the chest wall, more towards the anterior aspect. And so we would also see dominant positive P waves in V1, and you could say that there's, if there's a greater than 1.5 millimeters, that would also be criteria. So we can look at V1, and we can look at lead two, three, or AVF for very positive deflections on the really the initial part of our P wave to see uh, right atrial enlargement. So let's take a look at an EKG.
So here we've got our EKG. And remember, we're looking for atrial enlargement. So we're going to look at the P's. And so, you know, what could be some causes for right atrial enlargement? We would think maybe right ventricular hypertrophy, you know, from lung disease. So sometimes when you see, if you, if you know that maybe you see some evidence of right ventricular hypertrophy, then, oh, man, maybe they've got right atrial enlargement. And so remember I said that you could look at leads V1, and you could look to see if the P wave is greater than 1.5 millimeters in amplitude. Here it's very close. I would say maybe not quite. So let's look over at lead 2. We said lead 2, if the P wave is greater than 2.5 millimeters in amplitude, then we would have our diagnosis of right atrial enlargement. So if you look here, I would say that if I measure from superior to inferior, that is somewhere in between four to five millimeters. So there's my criteria for right atrial enlargement. Remember, if we look back at our heart, where does our right atria sit? in terms of hemodynamics, well, we know that the right atria, I'm going to erase this, our right atria is receiving systemic blood flow. It's receiving blood from the superior vena cava. It's taking this blood and it's pumping it to the right ventricle. So any right ventricular disease is going to cause a backflow of blood, and it's going to really stress that right atrial out. So anytime you see right, right ventricular disease on EKG, look for right atrial disease, and we'll be going through that too. So I hope that helps, and uh, happy EKGs.